Alright, we good, we good. Uh, Alright. Shabbat Shalom to Yah Shabala. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to those on um, Periscope and the conference call. Hope the Sabbath is uh, going well for you. We bid you a uh, Shabbat, peaceful Shabbat, uh, Sabbath. Um, the title of the lesson is called Back to Basics, Milk is Good. Um, the Spirit moved me just to talk about this uh, the subject. Uh, hopefully we can uh, exhort and, and kind of redefine uh, what, we, what we should be locked in on. Um, and, you know, uh, and let the Spirit move us uh, where we need to be moved. So uh, with that, once again, uh, the title of the lesson is called Back to Basics, Milk is Good. Uh, I'm Brother Yako, this is Brother Amar. And, uh, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, we're, going, uh, we're just going to jump into it. Uh, the first uh, scripture we want to just uh, go into uh, is uh, Colossians 3 and 17. Just to put us uh, in a mind state. Um, so again, the, the title called Back to Basics, Milk is Good, because sometimes um, we get caught up in what's milk and what's meat. And um, what we really need to be focusing on is uh, the milk. Um, and as we go through the study, we'll understand that the milk can actually, actually be uh, seen as meat. Um, you know, you got some camps saying, you know, certain doctrines and certain levels of understanding is meat, but really and truly what we need to be doing is concentrating on the basic stuff. Um, and that that's, is what's going to give us the chance to earn a spot in salvation. So, once again, back to basics, meat is good. Colossians what? Uh, Colossians 3 and 17. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Hamashiach Yesha giving thanks to Ahiah and the Father by him right so whatsoever we do in word or deed we do in the name and for the glory of Yasha Hamashiach and Ahiah right um, so I just went here to kind of give us, uh, put us in a mind state as we go on with the study and um, really want to pay close attention um, to uh, to the word word. You know, it says, and whatsoever we do in word, um, I think that's a key point that we need to remember. And um, I I'll emphasize it as we go on with the study. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, again, back to basics. Milk is good. So we're going to take a look at, at Yasharala as a whole from the time of our, our ancestors and forefathers all the way up to now and, and, and kind of see how we got away from the milk and just kind of jumped around for no reason about trying to understand me. So with that, we're going to go to Hosea 4 and 1. Mm -hmm. Because we know and understand that the Most High sent Yasha to us to basically keep the commandments and operate within the commandments. And for some reason, Yasharala, being stiff necked as we are and were, uh, somehow strayed away from that. All right. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth nor mercy, nor knowledge of a higher in the land. Right. So it says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Um, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So we know that we are his chosen people. So he's talking directly to us. He has a controversy with us because there is no truth. Now, we just went from uh, Colossians 3 and 17. Everything we do is in word and deed. We know that the word is Yasha, right? So knowing that, we get the understanding that because there is no truth, right? So we're, for some reason, continuously staying away or straying away from the word. Um, no mercy, right? We're very callous towards each other. Um, holding grudges, uh, which is um, going against, you know, what Yasha teaches. Um, nor knowledge of a higher in the land, right? 
So us being awakened is a beautiful thing, but even with that, we still have some, some learning to do, right? We still trying to get knowledge of a higher and apply it to our lives. But there's the lost house of Israel out there who um, aren't in the knowledge, which we are supposed to bring to the knowledge. Uh -huh. But he has a controversy with all of that, right? Yasharala, who was in the learn, um, we're not merciful, you know? Um, and the Yasharala, who are quote unquote the lost sheep, have no knowledge of a higher or a heritage, right? So with that, we're going to go to um, Micah 6 and 2, because I want to, um, let's just look into that word controversy. Micah 6 and 2. So Hosea 4 and 1, we know that the Most High is feeling some type of way about us, right? Okay. Micah chapter 6, verse 2. Hear ye, O mountains. The Lord's controversy and a strong foundation and Salakia. Hear ye, O mountains, the mm -hmm. Lord's controversy and ye strong foundations of the earth. Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath a controversy with his people and he will plead with, with Yasharala. Right. So again, Hosea 4 and 1 saying that the Most High has a controversy. And this uh, Micah 6 and 2 just confirms that he's talking to Israel. So, um, it's not like the Most High wants this controversy, but for some reason our stiff neck um, position has us at odds with, with our Creator, right? But He wants to plead with Israel, right? Mm -hmm. So um, to, to kind of build on that, we're going to go um, to Hosea chapter 12 and 2. Hosea chapter 12 and 2. So he has a controversy with Yasharala in general. Okay. Hosea chapter 12, verse 2. The Lord ha hath also a controversy with Judah mm -hmm. and will punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his doings, he will recompense him. All right. So we understand that he has a controversy with Israel in general. But this right here is particularly with Judah, right? The scepter shall come to Judah. So Judah has a responsibility, to, responsibility, Salakia, to act right and to really abide by, you know, the Lord's ways. Mm -hmm. So I brought that up just to kind of um, single out Yasharala and Ju Judah. We're all the same people, but there is a specific request um, or responsibility for Judah. All right. Um, so with that, we're going to go to uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 3, verses, let's start at 8. Isaiah chapter 3 and 8. So he says, um, uh, he's going to punish J Jacob according to his will, I mean his way, Salaki, according to his doings. So again, Judah, you know, we going off by doing our own thing. Um, okay. So Isaiah chapter 3 verse 8. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Right. So just what I said, Judah is falling because their tongue and their doings, right? For some reason, um, since the time we were led out of Egypt, um, we've been kind of, not really kind of, but we've been doing our own thing, um, forsaking his laws and his ways. Um, lock you. Forsaking his laws and ways, um, which again is the controversy. So, uh, one moment. Mm -hmm. I think we adjust ourselves. Excuse me. Let's block it, folks. Patience, please. Terry, with me one moment. All right. A little better, yeah. All right, so Isaiah 3, um, and, it, and it says, uh, For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, um, because their tongue and their doings are against the Most High, uh, to provoke his eyes to glory. Uh, get uh, verse 9. All right. Uh, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 9. The, the shoe of their countenance doeth witness against them, 
and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. All right, we transgress the most high, going against the statute, laws, and commandments, doing our own thing like there ain't a price to pay. But there is a price to pay. But um, apparently we don't think so. And uh, we continue on to this very day. Let's lock you one moment. Let's go back a little bit. All right. Um, so with that, we're going to go back to Hosea. Um, let's go to Hosea chapter 10, verse 13. So I'm taking you through these scriptures just to point out um, how the Most High is, I don't want to say mad, but upset with us or disappointed in his chosen people because for some reason... Um, he give us the law, statutes, and commandments, and we just can't humble ourselves enough to, to walk in it. Um, you know, we go into different understandings, claiming to be, like, well-learned, but really, you know, we need to stick with the basics and get the milk down. Um, Hosea 10 and 13? Mm -hmm. All right, Hosea chapter 10, verse 13. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity. Mm -hmm. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way, mm -hmm. in the multitude of thy mighty men. Come. Ye have, ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped in, inequity. So that's transgressions, rebellions, etc., etc. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies, taken on the system, or assimilated in the system of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Thinking we're doing well in Babylon, but really we're in contrast to the Most High. Right? It says... Uh, because thou didst trust in thy way, your mm -hmm. own understanding, in the multitude of the mighty men, so the people who run this country, right? Success, we look at success from their um, perspective as opposed to how we're supposed to look at our success through Yasharala. Um, on the top, on the okay. All right. So, yeah. All right. Um, so with that, we're going to go to uh, Hebrews 3 and 17. So Hebrews chapter 3, verse 17. There we go. So we're talking about the Lord and his controversy with Yasharala. Um, Yasharala going off and doing things in his own way, in his own mind, um, not really giving reverence or, or um, respect to the most high power. And um, yeah, so go ahead and grab it. All right. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 17. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Right. So this is just identifying that that him, um, that he was the most high. You know, he was with us when we came out of um, oh, Salakia, Salakia. All right, we're going to try to work on that one. Um, so yeah, Hebrews 3 and 17, it says, but with whom he was grieved 40 years, right? So he was with us all that time, like pleading with us, choosing us. Can you even if I say that, is that better? Uh, we hope that, we hope that's uh, a little better. Mm -hmm. Um, but back to the scriptures. So I went here to let you know that, um, this is the most high with us. Um, was it not them that has sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? So he was with us back then, even when we were going off, but we were supposed to trust in him and walk in his ways even then, right? So with that, we're going to go to Isaiah uh, chapter 42, verses 24 and 25. Isaiah 42. Mm -hmm. Once again, the name of the study is Back to Basics. Milk is good. Um, so Yasharala, we're in this position because we have strayed away from the basics, which is the milk. Um, sometimes uh, the ability to overstand things um, is kind of a negative. Okay. Isaiah chapter 42, which verse? Uh, verse 24. All right. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 24. Who gave Jacob for a spoil? And Israel to the robbers. Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? Mm -hmm. uh, one second. And 
It says, he <clears throat> against whom we have sinned, again, transgressed, transgressed the statute, laws, and commandments. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, for they would not walk in his ways, mm -hmm. neither were they obedient unto his law. Mm -hmm. Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, mm -hmm. and it set him on fire round about, mm -hmm. yet he knew not. We don't even know. Mm -hmm. still, we're still carrying on like it's okay, like there's no consequence. Go ahead. And it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. We still haven't taken it to heart. Like the consequence, um, it's like we don't even uh, put the reality of the consequence in a proper context, right? Um, it's like we fail to realize the magnitude of eternity, right? Eternal sal salvation or eternal damnation, right? The key word being eternal. And everything we do um, is judged, right? So with that, I just wanted to bring uh, to the light that the Most High is watching us, right? He's watching us. Um, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22. The Most High watching us continually uh, transgress against him. And remember, we're his chosen people, right? <clears throat> Statute, laws, and uh, commandments he gave them to Jacob. He knew no other nation. Paraphrasing for Psalms uh, 147 19, I believe it is. Alright. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22. Come. And it reads For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. Mm -hmm. And they have none understanding. They are wise to do to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Come. So this is where we are current day, right? You got um, Israelites, um, you know, in camps, and you got Yasharala who's lost, doing what they want to do, right? Even when we're in the truth, we, we twist things up um, to, quote, unquote, our advantages, right? Twisting scriptures up to apply to what we want to accomplish. accomplish. So, um, again, it says, for well, my people is foolish. They have not known me, meaning we stray away. They are sottish children. Uh, let me just get Sadish real quick. Uh, out of the Strong's, it's H5528, and it means silly, right? Foolish, right? They have no understanding. They have none understanding, right? Uh, but we were given the instruction, so we do have the understanding. We choose not to follow the understanding, right? They are wise to do evil. We're selfish. And I don't want to, like, come down on Yasharala, but I'm just... Um, just bringing it out because it's all of us. Like we all need to tweak things to get get on the right side of things. But um, just our habits and um, lack of application um, has us in this position, right? Um, it says uh, they are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge, right? For some reason we stray away. Um, so with that, one second. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and 21. Book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. And again, the name of the lesson is called Back to Basics, right? So we're just kind of going over uh, why Ahai is upset with us. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. Ye cannot drink the cup, uh, drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of serpents. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table, and the table and of the table of serpents. Right. So lukewarm is not even an option, really. Right. Lukewarm gets you on the wrong side of things. It says uh, you can't drink from the cup of the Lord and the cup of the serpents. So you got to make a choice, right? And, and keep in mind, you know, from the beginning, from our ancestors and forefathers, we were chosen to drink the cup of the Lord, right? So we know the Lord uh, is the word and the word of the truth. So we can't not drink of a cup of truth and apply it, right? Um, let's go to Jeremiah 2 and 13. Uh -huh. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. So we have all this, um, uh, I want to say rebellious spirit from Yasharala. That we're, I'm just bringing out, right? Because milk is good, right? So the milk in this context is to get back to following 
um, the instruction of the Most High, walking in his ways. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 2, uh, verse 13. All right, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, mm -hmm. and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no water. Mm. So this is a powerful wow. scripture, right? For my people have committed two evils, two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, which is Christ, right? This is Old Testament. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, which is Christ, and hewn them out sisters, 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 Salakia, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So we forsake the, the Most High in Yasha and did our own thing, which is our current position now, right? But um, for, for the sake of edification, I want to just kind of expound on the fountain of living waters, right? So we know the Most High uh, chose Christ or sent Christ to be the Word, the living water, right? Um, so I just want to go to John uh, chapter 1, verse 1, just to uh, reconfirm uh, who also, the Word is. Also, I wanted to bounce off of this too, man. Uh, um, uh, you know, say, uh, for my for my people have committed two uh, two evils, they, for they have forsaken the fountain of living waters and hewed them out systems. That kind of remind me too of um, uh, when Moses went up to the mountain to go get the commandments. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Aaron created, uh, you know, they took all the gold and all that stuff and created them a calf. Mm -hmm. That's a prime example of what's going on, mm -hmm. you know. Now, the, the first evil is forsaking the Most High, mm -hmm. which we know we're not supposed to do that's you know number one commandment okay. and then the second one is replacing him with something else right you know what i mean a dumb idol your with. own imagination right that's what i'm getting at right right we, we we're trying to substitute our chief cornerstone okay. right and, and and thinking we're going to get salvation and things are going to work out in our favor by doing that mm -hmm. right it was in, they were impatient then just like we're impatient now. Yeah. Um, That's a powerful scripture. Um, which um, one are we going to? Uh, let's go to John, just to reconfirm who the word is. Just I don't know um, if we got new listeners on. St. John? Yeah, St. John chapter 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. So when I say the word, or when we say the word, Salakia, we mean Christ. Okay. So St. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with a higher, and the word was a higher. Mm-hmm. Keep going? Yeah, um, you can read it through four. Okay. The same was in the beginning with the higher. Uh -huh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Uh -huh. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. All right. So I just brought that just um, to expound on uh, who, who Christ is. Um, but what I think what's important here is uh, verse four says, in him was life, so we know the word is life, right? Nothing is uh, achieved without going through Christ. And the life was the light of man. So our truth and the word is Christ that we need to get back to, the milk of things, right? Um, yeah. So with that, let's go to Titus uh, chapter 1, verse 16. I'll kind of get back on topic here about how Israel has fallen off or um, selfishly doing their own thing. Uh, uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 16. So again, we're just covering, uh, you know, why the Most High has us in this position, um, it, which is basically because we have strayed, uh, strayed away from the milk. Be straight away from the basic understandings and, and trying to apply uh, the basic understandings to our life. Mm -hmm. So Titus 1 to 16? Gone. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. They profess that they know a higher, mm -hmm. but in works they deny him, mm -hmm. being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. All right. So they profess that they know the Most High, but in works they deny him. Right? Um, it says being abominable and disobedient, right? Disobedient, disobedient. That's a key word for us, right? And I'm, this is this the this is uh, an important part I, I thought anyway. And to 
and unto every good work reprobate. Hmm. Right? So we're just going against the grain. Right? Just like the example the brother gave, um, Moses went up to, to commune with the Most High and, you know, no sooner than he left, you know, he started doing all, uh, idolat idolatry and things of that nature. All right. Let's get uh, Titus uh, chapter 3, verse 3. All right. Titus chapter 3, verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Right. So I went here just to <clears throat> make the connection. Like, um, I'm paraphrasing scripture, but um, there's nothing new under the sun. What our forefathers and ancestors were doing back then, we do now, and as evidenced with Titus 3 and 3, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're disobedient. I don't want to say foolish, but in a sense we are because um, we're not following as thorough as we possibly can, and it's for our salvation in the end, right? Serving uh, diverse lust, uh, which is a constant battle, but it's something that, um, you know, the fallen one uses to keep us away from, from our power, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so just bringing that out to make the connection that, you know, we're just as guilty as our forefathers and ancestors. And um, just like some of our forefathers and ancestors had to work on their salvation, uh, we got to do the same thing. Uh, so with that, we're going to go with uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 11. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 11. Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of Ahiah, because we have sinned against him. Mm -hmm. So again, just reconfirming that, you know, Israel be going off, like we're still going off, you know what I mean? Um, he says, it transgressed, all Israel has transgressed thy law, even by departing, like going away from, from, keep, from what keeps us solid, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's get 10. I'm going to go backwards here. So we got 11. Let's go 10. Okay. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our power Come. to walk in his laws, mm -hmm. which he set before us by his servant the prophets, so by we, the servants. We've given right. a blueprint. We've been given a blueprint from um, our forefathers' times, and we have the blueprint because we have the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. We have we have the blueprint to, to um, protect ourselves from eternal damnation, right? Eternal damnation is what we're fighting against. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to bounce yeah. ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. You got something anytime. Um, I just wanted to pop a little precept in there real quick. Uh -huh. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, Daniel 9 and 11, it says, uh, Yea, all Israel have transgressed the law, thy law, Salakia, even by departing, uh, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of Ahiah, mm -hmm. because we have sinned against him. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to uh, line that up with... Uh, uh, Jeremiah 6 and 16, um, and it reads, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Come. The old paths is milk. That's the milk that we need to get back to, you know? Absolutely. Keeping it simple, and, uh, you know, seeking out the simplicity Absolutely. in this walk. It says, uh, Where is the good way, and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. Come on. But they said, we will not walk therein. All right, so mm -hmm. just that's wanted to. That's a good precept. Bounce right. off of there. Good precept, sure. Praise the most high. Mm -hmm. We're uh, um, we going to next? Let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 9, uh, verse 13. Get 13 to 14. Right. Or actually 13 to 16. So up to this point, just highlighting how Israel, we, Yasharala, 
has transgressed against our power, right? Um, and and how the mo most high our power is reacting to that, right? So we're gonna figure out, figure out. We're gonna see um, the most high's action against us because we've sinned repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 13. And the Lord said, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, mm -hmm. and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein, mm -hmm. but have walked after their imagination of Salakia, but have walked after the imagination of their own hearts. Which we're doing nowadays. And after... Um, you can, Son of Beor. Yeah, you can just yeah, you, you can say the serpent. It's all the same. Yeah, thing. the serpent, mm -hmm. which their father taught them, mm -hmm. which their fathers taught them, Slaki, mm -hmm. because we weren't content with what we had. Mm -hmm. Like, if for some reason it wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. and, and keep in mind, back then they saw the wonders like live and direct. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just think about that. Um, therefore, thus saith the Lord of Hosts. The power of Israel. Behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood, mm -hmm. and give them water of gall to drink. So that's a bitter life, mm -hmm. right? That's a, everything we do. Um, you're gonna have some bitterness to it because, uh, like he said, we're, we're stiff neck, right? We're stiff neck, and um, just like a father chastises uh, his son, like sometimes you gotta do some things to to bring him around. So that's the position we're in, right? Um, and this happened because we, again, I keep repeating it, we've, we've gotten from the basics, right? The milk of things, all right? Uh, what we at? Let's bounce back to um, Daniel uh, chapter 9 and get uh, 13 and 14. The book of Daniel chapter 9, verse 13 and 14. All right. Daniel chapter 9 verse 13 and is, as it is written in the law of Moses all this evil has come upon us yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our power mm -hmm. that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth right. um, therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us mm -hmm. for the Lord our power is righteous in all his works which he doeth for we obey not his voice. Right. So let me get that one more time. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is going to come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before our power, right? A higher our power, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. So for some reason, we haven't yet to fully, uh, I guess, get in a repentance um, state of mind to understand our iniquities and, and get with the truth which is the word, which is Christ, everything through Yasha, right? Therefore, because we haven't done this, um, the Most High has watched our evil, right? And brought it upon us. For the Lord is our righteous, for, for our power is righteous in all his works which he doeth. For we obey not his voice. So he's just like like a um, like a father, you know, you, he watching his children purposely go against him and knowing something's going to happen to them to hopefully make them see the light and turn it around. That's what the scripture is saying. All right. So with that, we're going to go to uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 4, verse 27. Again, <clears throat> just just making clear or bringing to uh, to the forefront, you know, Yasharala in general, you know, Judah in particular, uh, how we have uh, gotten away from the basics, which is um, like he's, I've been saying over and over, we kept not his laws, um, we transgressed, and not walked in his ways. So that's what we're guilty of. All right. So the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 4, verse 27. Yeah. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. All right. Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the, among the nations, Mm -hmm. And ye shall be left in uh, Salakia, and ye shall be left few in number. Mm -hmm. So you, you know Salakia. Mm -hmm. No, you good. So it says, um, "You will be left few in numbers." Remember, in the Old Testament, when Moses uh, was was getting the word, um, and our forefathers uh, Abraham, 
he said um, Israel would be numbered as the stars and the sand, you know, sand in the sea. You can't number that. So Israel was, was great in number, but this here is telling you that we'll be left few in number because of our transgression. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, and the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. Mm -hmm. So he put us in this position. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, mm -hmm. idolatry, wood and stone, mm -hmm. um, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. Mm -hmm. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy power, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Mm -hmm. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, Today. if thou turn to the Lord thy power, and shall be obedient unto his voice, mm -hmm. for the Lord thy power is a merciful power. That's big. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore, swear, Salakia, unto thee, come, unto them. Come. So this is, this can be applied to present day, right? Come on. Right? So if we seek him with all our heart and all our soul when we are tri in tribulation. All these things come upon, uh, come upon us, even in the latter days or present days. If thou turn to our power and shall be obedient, meaning get back to the basics, mm -hmm. getting back to operating in the milk of things, uh, he is merciful. So we went through all these scriptures um, highlighting how we were on the wrong side of things. And I, 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 I kind of purposely put it in that way to show like um, our negative, so to speak, and how the Most High feels about our negativity or, or disobedience. And then I want to come here to let you know that we could turn, we should turn things around. Like mm -hmm. we're ob obligated to turn things around. Mm -hmm. Right? All right. So. Um, with that, um, we're kind of going to go into a different phase. Uh, we've we've kind of talked about the negative, so to speak. Now let's talk about how we can uh, get back on the right side of things. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to go right back into uh, Hosea, the book of Hosea. Uh, let's go to chapter 14, verse 1. So Israel has been guilty of transgression and rebellion and stiff neck and any other uh, word that means disobedient from our forefathers and ancestors up to present day, right? Even um, Yasharala in the truth, right? We got some camps who, who throw some, you know, suspect uh, perspective uh, as it pertains to doctrine, right? It is what it is, but we got to fight through that and, and change that. Uh, Hosea 13 and 1 or 14? Uh, 14 and 1. Hosea chapter 14, verse 1. O Israel, Return unto the Lord thy power, for thou hast fallen by thy iniquity. Mm -hmm. Take with your words and turn to the Lord. Okay. Say unto him, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously, so we uh, render the calves of our lips. Okay. Wow. Let me get that one more wow. time, right? So we were talking, so um, in Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Salakia, um, Deuteronomy, um, Chapter 4, verse 27, 31 was the opportunity. Um, if we turn to our power, he will be merciful to us. Um, and this is telling us, like, in pretty much direct terms, O Israel, return unto your power, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. So here, you know, he's telling us because of our iniquity, we're in this position, right? Take with you words. We, uh, we, touched, we touched on uh, what words are, right? Christ. Christ is the word. So take with you words, the truth, the law, the statute, laws, and commandments, and turn to the to the Most High, saying to him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously, right? So if we come to him humbly, like really acknowledging um, the level of transgression, um, he will be merciful, right? It says, so we will render the calves of our lips. And it's funny you brought out that. That uh, example, like mm -hmm. the calf, right? Mm -hmm. That's the idolatry, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It says we will render basically the idolatry from our lips, right? Um, so with that, let's go to Hosea chapter ten, verse twelve. 
Uh, Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Sow to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Right. So we brought out the scriptures um, highlighting our transgressions, right? It's been going on for quite some time. But this right here says it's time to turn things around, right? So um, it's necessary for us to be in repent mode, right? Everyone. Like no one's perfect. Like um, my ox says, man, all of us together, <clears throat> all our righteousness combined together is still fil filthy rag. So we got, you know, at some point we really got to look in the mirror and um, see how or if we're applying these scriptures to our life, right? Um, let's go to uh, Hosea 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 2. So we need to be in repentance mode, and repentance means, you know, changing your habits, you know, not just saying, you know, I repent, you know, every other day for the same thing, right? Hosea chapter 14, verse 2. Take with your, you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. Mm -hmm. So will we render the cast of our lips. Just to kind of repeat and kind of drive the point home, right? It's about that time that we uh, really acknowledge what we're doing and where we're at um, in a grand scheme of things, right? So... Mm -hmm. um, with that, we're going to bounce to uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 7, right? So we've already talked about how we've uh, transgressed the Lord, how we've uh, pretty much made the most high upset. Now we're trying to um, bring out scriptures about how we can um, gain his favor, so to speak. So Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 7. All right, so it reads, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, mm -hmm. and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. Right, wow. so we come back to him, like, with, it says, all our heart, all our soul, right? It has to be with everything, every ounce of repentance, every ounce of sorrow, um, every ounce of, of desire to want to, you know, correct um, where we are, so he will be abundantly pardoned, right? Abundantly. But we got a meeting, but not with a half effort, right? Um, so we're just going to keep building on it. Uh, let's go to Second uh, Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And this, this study, again, is called Back to Basics. Milk is good, right? We're just trying to get back to the basics of, of how we should operate and uh, why we're in this current position and, and how we can, most high willing, you know, just come across um, on good soil, um, how we can turn things around and, and, and really exhort one another and provoke each other onto good works because that's what this is all about. All right. Second Chronicles 7.14. Come on. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, mm -hmm. shall humble themselves and pray mm -hmm. and seek my face mm -hmm. and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin mm -hmm. and will heal their land. Right. So again, I'm kind of bouncing all over the place with different um uh, scriptures in the book that's saying the same thing that we this is how we get back on the right side of things and it said heal the land so you know we were kicked out of our land in 70 AD and we haven't been back since because of the transgression and even in the world in general it's a chaotic place because Yasharala Yasharala in general and specifically hasn't gotten to that place where the most high feels he needs to change things up because all of Yasharala is still fighting with Yasharala to get back to the milk of things. Mm -hmm. Back to basics. Milk is good. Yeah. And right. you know, this this is a real powerful scripture, man, because, you know, the Most High is really formatting our path back to Him. Come on. And it's, 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 He's telling us, you know, very clearly how to do it. Come on. If my people which are called by my name, right, shall humble themselves. That's step one. Humble ourselves Come to on. the Most High. Mm -hmm. Number two, and pray 
Number three, and seek my face. Mm -hmm. Number four, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Huh. Those are the basics right there. Huh. You know, he, he, he gave us the format. Right. It's the milk of things. Huh. It's the milk of things. All right. Huh. So, um, and that, was, that was beautiful. I, Man, the scripture is powerful. Man. And powerful. It's, it's for us, though. It's for us. It's for our well benefit. You know what I mean? Huh. Um, let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Right, because we keep saying back to bit, excuse salakia, back to basics. Milk is good, right? Uh -huh. So let's just see uh, what the scriptures tell us. First Peter chapter two verse two. Uh -huh. All right. First Peter chapter two verse two. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Come. So. We, we went through the scriptures showing our transgression, how we kind of strayed away from the Most High, right? So now we're in this um, this rebuilding phase, right? And here it's telling us as newborn babes, right? We got to come in this thing as babes all over again. Just to whatever you thought you knew, we got to put that on pause and kind of re-examine all the scriptures that we thought we knew to see, you know, where we went off from, right? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk, Right? the rich, basic mm -hmm. nutrients of the milk, right? The milk is the word, right? It says the milk of the word. We already, um, I've already said a couple of times, the word is Yasha, mm -hmm. right? So back to basics really means getting back to Yasha, right? That we may grow thereby. So we got to start all over and mm -hmm. re-examine everything. Okay, right? can I get verse one? Absolutely. Verse, verse one, one, it says, uh, wherefore laying aside all malice, and all guile, mm -hmm. and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings. Come, come. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Huh. That's powerful that you brought that first one out. So huh. all that stuff got to be wiped out, huh. right? The malice, the guile, the hypocrisies, the envies, the evil speaking, like all that negative stuff got to be erased off the paper. Right? And then come back as newborn babes. That's what he's telling us that we have to do to get on the right side of things, right? And again, that's the end goal, to get on the right side of things. No one, no one wants to hear depart from me. That's not good, right? That's all bad. All right? Uh, where we at here? Um, I just want to kind of uh, piggyback on the, on the babes, right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians uh Chapter 3, verse 2. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 2. All right. 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Mm -hmm. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. <laughs> that's, a that's a powerful scripture, right? I have um, fed you milk like he gave us the basics, right? forefathers and our ancestors they had the basics and um, not me right because some some levels we just not ready to handle because we don't have the basics down right for hitherto you were not able to bear it neither yet are ye able now Salakia. neither yet now are ye able so we're not even even able to handle the meat now so while these different camps is going in a different doctrine and phases of the doctrine, like we don't even got the milk down, right? Back to basics. Milk is good. All right, um, moving right along, um, we just want to stay on the concept of, of you know, uh, becoming babes again or starting all over as babes, I should say. We're going to go to uh, the book of St. Matthews, uh, chapter 18, verse 3, right? The milk of things is really, you know, sticking with Yasha and what he told us to do. All right. Uh, Matthew, chapter 18, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted mm -hmm. and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. There it is, there it is again. You got to start all over, right? Become as babes, right? When you look at little kids, 
they open to receive everything, but they're tapped into the truth of things, right? They just concentrate and focus on being righteous, right? Just being righteous. It says, um, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, right? Which um, we could precept that with uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, right? And become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So if we don't start all over and really re-examine how we apply the doctrine of Yasha to our lives, um, we're going to be in a, um, a funny state, right? Not stable for sure, right? Um, let's shoot to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1. Again, milk is good. Milk is good, back to basics. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy power and keep his charge mm -hmm. and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. All right, so this is the basics. Mm -hmm. This is the milk pretty uh -huh. much. This is the basics. This is the milk. It says, Therefore thou shalt love uh, a higher our power and keep his charge. Charge is another word for ordinances, right? Keep his ordinances and the statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments, always, right? So this is how we should be operating in the world, with Yasharala and the other nations, and the Gentiles, right? Um, and, I, and I just want to say this, I hope this is, I hope I'm not coming across like, um, it, it's a simple, simple task that can be accomplished. It's not, right? Because we know the following uses temptation and um, our desires to, to pull us away from this, this uh, verse right here. So I don't want to come across like um, it's an easy fix. All I'm trying to do is really just put it to the forefront of how we all need to be mindful of how we should kind of tweak our walk. That's all I'm trying, trying to do. Mm -hmm. All right. And, you know, it's, it's a balance, too, because we don't want to look at it as if it's too hard neither. Come Because come. He, he's mapping it out for us and showing us that right. it is doable. Right, right. You I, know? But you, you make a good yeah. point. Like, it has to be done because... Um, earlier I said, like, we're working for two outcomes, right? Either eternal salvation or eternal damnation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this this specific uh, chapter and verse is, is, like I said, the, the basics, the milk uh -huh. of things. So that's why I went here anyway. Uh -huh. um, let's go to uh, Zechariah uh, chapter 3, verse 7. Again, the main goal... You know, servants that are scattered sheep is to exhort one another, you know, provoke each other to good works, you know. Uh, uh, 3 verse 7. Mm -hmm. uh, the book is Zechariah chapter 3 verse 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, mm. and shall also keep my courts. Mm. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. So it's necessary that we do Deuteronomy 11 and 1, right? Somebody has to judge, right? And you're not going to be uh, fit to judge if you don't have the milk down, the basics down. Hmm. So, again, the name of the study is Back to Basics. The milk is good. Like, without a thorough understanding of the milk, there's no way one can judge his house. And all this stuff has to come to pass, keep in mind, right? Because the kingdom can't be established without people to hold these spots. So um, with that, we're going to go back to uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 5, because it says here um, that thou will walk in, a way, in his ways and keep his charge. Um, only then will be fit to judge his house, I'm paraphrasing, right? So to be fit, we need to present ourselves in a, in a, um, a particular manner. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what that manner looks like um, in chapter, I'm sorry, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. All right. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, mm -hmm. are built up a spiritual house mm -hmm. and holy priesthood mm -hmm. to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to a higher by Hamashiach and Shah. Mm -hmm. So this is putting the milk into practice. Right? This is putting the milk in, into practice. 
um, applying the basics, right? Lively stones, right? Um, are built up a spiritual house. So we are walking temples of the Most High, uh, whether you um, are conscious of it or not. We are, um, especially uh, those who are listening on the line and uh, look at the periscope. Like we're we're awakened for a reason, right? Because there's some uh, there's a restoration process that has to take place. Um, um, spiritual sacrifices, right? Uh, acceptable to a uh, higher Bayasha. Um, Let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. And we can read it uh, 20 through 22. So we're talking about spiritual houses and, and, and why that's important. So Ephesians 2 and 20? Yeah, come on. We read it through 22. All right. So spiritual, uh, spiritual sacrifices unto a higher through Yasha, right? Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And it reads, um, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yasha Hamashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Can you get that one more time, Michael? That's a pretty important and built upon the foundation mm -hmm. of the apostles and prophets, mm -hmm. Yasha Hamashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. All right, so this is what our lively stone is built upon, right? Our spiritual house is established through this. Go ahead. Uh, verse 21, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth onto a holy temple in the Lord. Right? So everything based or built upon Christ, right? Our, our spiritual house is built upon Christ. And um, it says, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth onto an holy temple in the Lord. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is a power of scripture because this is, this is the, the milk and the basics um, growing, so to speak. Right? Um, let's go to first John chapter three, uh, verse 22. Let's see. We got about eight more scripts. And, uh, we'll bid you a higher speed. First John mm -hmm. chapter three, verse, uh, 22. Okay. And this is just, um, to share with Yasharala that we can turn it. We got to, first of all, we have to turn this thing around, but this is how we turn it around and why we turn it around, mm -hmm. right? All things through Yasha. First John, chapter 3, verse 22. And whatsoever we ask and receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Mm -hmm. um, and this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yasha HaMashiach, the cornerstone, and love one another mm -hmm. as he gave us commandment. That's milk. That's milk. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. Mm -hmm. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Come on. So our spiritual houses are established through Yasha. And Yasha here is saying we can ask anything of him if we operate in a certain manner, which is keeping the commandments, uh, loving one another, right? Fruits of the spirit. Milk. But, but they're the basics, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you know, you, and when we talk about love, you know, love, love is milk because you know we all have somebody that we love naturally. Mm -hmm. um, but it becomes meat when it comes to those that may frustrate you, those that may try to oppress you, mm -hmm. those that may talk down to you. Mm -hmm. the, what, what the what the Most High looks at in every man is how do we deal with those that come against us come those that are not that easy to love come you know what I mean come and that's when it becomes meat mm -hmm. that's when uh, we are being tried in the come fire on. come on to see if we yep to see if we're worthy come on. absolutely yep. absolutely and you know I, I just want to uh, bounce off that too you know that's one of the things that um, is milk but it's a still it's still a very heavy topic mm -hmm. to the point where it should always be the main focus um, 
of anything that we try to do because it's such a heavy thing to do huh. when huh. you're feel when you're facing affliction. Right. Um, that that's what made the Most High look at Job. You know, um, the way he did mm -hmm. was because when he was facing affliction, mm -hmm. he didn't uh, forsake his right. love for the Most High. Right. He kept it right there. Right. You know? I, I get it. Like yeah. it's easy to love when you when you uh, reaping the, the blessings, right? Mm -hmm. But when the blessings on pause, when the Most High trying to check what you're really about, right? That's when he's trying to see, you know, where your love lies at. You know what I mean? And you made a, a great example. Like when we're um, persecuted, right? We still supposed to be in a state of love, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's a test right there, and you know we gotta we gotta cling on to the milk of things, right? Because the milk mm -hmm. is gonna get us through that test. Uh, yeah. And a quick little example of that: um, when when Christ was on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. He 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 loved the people that he was sent for so much that he said straight up, uh, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do." Uh, that that was. Uh, abundant of love because right. the, I mean it's to the point where he, this this man is facing death right another example is Stephen um, when he mm -hmm. when he, you know the most high put the spirit on him to, to speak the truth to the people and they started to stone him to death and in the midst of them stoning him he prayed to the most high and told him you know don't lay please don't lay this at their charge Come. that's Come. just now just to show how meat love can be when it's not somebody that you uh, is a part of your bloodline or somebody that loves you back. How many of us can apply that right now? Mm -hmm. And that's showing how when we talk about back to the basics, this is a very big thing, right. even though it might seem small. Right. It, it, it's milk, but it's meat. Right. When you're feeling, when you're facing affliction, right? You that's a good. For, that's a great. Um, yeah, a good example because f forgiveness is is part of the basics, right? Forgiveness is part of the milk, but it becomes meat when you have to apply it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. Uh -huh. Um, let's uh, let's go to Romans, the book of Romans, chapter eight. Right. So we we're just touching on you know. Different uh, different points in the, in, the, in our book uh, as to how we can turn things around and, and get on the right side of uh, working toward our salvation, right? Okay. Uh, Romans chapter eight, verse one. And I just want to say we going we we acknowledge that everything goes through Christ. Christ is the chief cornerstone. So huh. keep that in mind as the scripture is read. Romans chapter eight, verse one. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Yeshua, mm -hmm. who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. For the law of the spirit of life in, your, in Christ Yeshua hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Mm -hmm. Ahia sending his own son in the likeness of a of sinful flesh Us. and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Next example for us. The uh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walked after Salakia, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. Let me just pause right there. Mm -hmm. So the basics and the milk of this uh, these verses thus far is to stay in the spirit, right? Stay in the spirit. That's oh. the basics. That's the milk of things, right? And um, this is, this is you know, it's, it's challenging for all of Yasharala. I just want to throw that out. That's what the basics of this scripture thus far is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the, the thing about it is the Most High is calling us to be masters in these things. Come on. You know, we, we are supposed to master the discipline of this. Come on. And it, it, to, just to show how he even condensed it even more, just to kind of allow us to wrap our mind <coughs> around it better. You got Ten Commandments that, you know, Moses had on the tablets. Mm -hmm. When Yeshua came, he condensed it to two, but it's still really ten. Mm -hmm. First five. Or I mean, the first four mm -hmm. on how to deal with the Most High, mm -hmm. love the Most High with all your heart, 
the rest of them how to deal with your neighbor. Right. So he basically simplified it so that well, you can just focus on these two uh -huh. and everything that falls underneath it, you know. Um, but the you know anybody that say that we have that mastered right now, all praises to the Most High. You can say that confidently. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I, no, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> you, you, you say that now, you delusional. I'm gonna put it out there you know, straight up. Like this, that's a work in progress. So um, yeah, we, we gotta we gotta remain humble with that. Right. You know what I mean, you know. So, and I'm saying that to say this: if you are confident that you have that on smash, that you're loving perfectly all the way, you know, hey, I tip my hat to you. You know what I mean? And from that point on. I could see moving on to another discipline or another uh, uh, level of trying to master another understanding. Okay. But until then, we gotta we gotta really uh, you know drink that milk, okay. Okay. drink that milk of the love, and, and you know let it have its perfect work. Still apply that basics, and I I, I, I agree with you. I yeah. just you know if 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 you do have that mastered. Um, all praise to the Most High, but I just wonder, um, how can one have that mastered if they haven't faced um, all of their affliction and, and adversity, right? Because mm -hmm. we haven't even gotten to the tribulation yet, so mm -hmm. how, how do you know where you where you match up at? Uh -huh. Just just throwing it out there. Uh -huh. um, back to basics, man. Milk is good, yep. right? Milk is good. Um, where we left off? We uh, left off at five. At five? Yep. Okay. All right, verse six. For to be carnally minded is death, mm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Right. Basics. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Ahia, for it is not subject to the law of Ahia, neither indeed can be. Mm -hmm. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Ahia. Right. That's milk. We got to stay in the spirit, right? In all things, right? Mm. So when that adversity comes, we got to stay in the spirit, right? If you feel like um, someone has transgressed against you, um, you got to have a humble heart and, and willing to forgive, right? Easier said than done, I'll admit that, but, you know, that's what the scriptures tell us to do. That's what Yasha tell us to do. That's what Yasha did for us. Um, and, you know, he was crucified for us, so uh, we have to walk in his, his examples. Uh -huh. um, let's let's drop down to... Um, uh, 14. Let's let's pick it up in 14 and go through 17. All right. Uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 14. For as many are as uh, slack it, for as many as are led by the spirit of Ahia, they are the sons of Ahia. Uh -huh. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, uh -huh. but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Another chance. Whereby we cry, Abba. Uh -huh. Father, mm -hmm. the Spirit, so like it. the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of a higher. Mm -hmm. Praise the Most High. Mm -hmm. And if children then hears ears, ears of a higher, and joint ears with Yeshua, mm -hmm. if so be that we suffer with Him that we may be also glorified together. So we just talked about forgiveness, you know, being a part of the milk and the basics, right? Here it clearly says, um, and joint heirs with Yasha, if so be that we suffer with him, right? That's adversity, that's affliction. So again, like the brother said, if, if you got this master, you know, all praise to the most high, but we don't know what level of uh, sufferers is to come. Um, but if we go through that and stay with the basics and the milk of things and keeping, you know, our heart and mind set on, um, you know, being humble and forgiving, um, we may be glorified together, right? Uh, let's bounce to Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 15. You got about six more scriptures and um, we'll, we'll bring it to a close. The book of Hebrews. Chapter thirteen, verse fifteen, and these these scriptures, these remaining scriptures is going to uh, magnitude, a uh, magnitude, magnify Salakia, uh, the importance of Yasha. All right, Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse fifteen. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to a higher. 
continually. Mm -hmm. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Right, sticking with the milk, right. right? Applying the basics of his doctrine in all aspects of our life, right? Um, again, I said this is, you know, before it's, it's easier said than done, but scriptures, as we have read, tell us that it's necessary and we're obligated to um, apply ourselves in, in mastering that, right? And again, I, it's easier said than done. But we're going to go to uh, Hebrews 11 and 6, and hopefully that'll explain uh, that it can be done. All right, Hebrews 11 and 6. Mm -hmm. All right, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. For he that cometh to a higher must believe that he is. Mm -hmm. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right. So we got to have faith to apply uh, the milk, the basic teachings, right? Uh, <clears throat> he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we're, we're seeking, we're re-seeking. Remember I said we have to kind of um, go back to the basics to reestablish ourselves through, through the milk, right? So if we do that, uh, he will be a rewarder, right? And we're seeking to reestablish ourselves through the milk, through the basics. Come on. Come on. Um, let's bounce to Revelations uh, 14 and 12. Because um, as believers and followers of Yasha, um, we are um, obligated to carry ourselves in a particular way. All right. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Mm -hmm. Here are they that keep the commandments of Ahia mm -hmm. and the faith of Yesha. So there it is. All right, this is what we have to do. Um, this is part of uh, applying the basics, right? This is the milk um, that we need to hold dear uh, to our souls and apply, right? Keep, keep. Um, I want to say, keep a conscious mind towards, right? Uh, let's let's go to um, the Book of Mark, chapter twelve, verse thirty-three. Right, all things through Yasha. Right, we apply the basics. Um, we absorb and reestablish ourselves through the milk um, in the name of a higher. Remember, uh, we we began the study with Colossians three and seventeen. Like everything we do in word and deed, uh, all glory to uh, Yasha and Ahaya. All right, uh, the book of Mark, chapter twelve, verse thirty-three, and to love him with all the heart. And with all the understanding, mm -hmm. and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself mm -hmm. is more than all whole burnt offerings mm -hmm. and sacrifices. So this is the basics in the, meat, in the milk right here, right? To love him with all the heart, right? To love with all understanding, right? Understanding what Deuteronomy 11 and 1 was telling us, to keep his charge, right? And apply that, right, with all strength, and most importantly, to love his neighbor as himself, right? So, again, we talked about forgiving and how that milk can be seen as meat, but really is milk, mm -hmm. right? Um, let's go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. The book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. All right. So... Colossians chapter 1 verse 10 and it reads that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing mm -hmm. being fruitful in every good work mm -hmm. and increasing in the knowledge of a higher right so the knowledge of a higher is the basics is the milk right that's where we need to kind of focus ourselves right that's how we build ourselves up right um we got two more scripts. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. And then we got another one. Um, we're going to go to the Apocrypha to get. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Okay. Oh, 2 Corinthians. Uh -huh. okay. So these scriptures is uh, brought out mainly to um, like redirect us. To Christ and, and, and stand at a level of milk in Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse five. K 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Ahia, mm. and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You can't do that unless we get the basics down. You can't do that unless we understand the milk of things, right? Plain and simple. All right, um, <clears throat> and for the final script, we're going to go to the, the book of Sirach, uh, chapter 19, verse 18. Get you real quick. One moment. And this is just to um, exhort the brothers and sisters, you know, provoke on the good work and keep in mind, you know, as um, we bid you a higher speed after this scripture. Uh, Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, um, chapter 19, verse... Which verse? Uh, verse 18, 18 through 20. All right. Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 19, verse 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, mm. and wisdom obtaineth his love. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. That's the milk. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Mm. Applying the basics. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law, and the knowledge of his omnipotency. Mm -hmm. So he's always looking to see if we're applying the milk, and that we understand the basics. So, uh, once again, <clears throat> the, the name of the um, study was entitled, Back to Basics, Milk is Good. Uh, I hope... Um, a higher willing that we got some edification, uh, or at least encourage the brothers and sisters to, uh, you know, study to show themselves approved. Uh, but the information definitely to provoke uh, Yashirala on the good works. Mm. All right. So with that, we're going to close the lesson and uh, bid you all a peaceful Shabbat, a Shabbat, Sabbat, and uh, bid you a higher speed. Shabbat Shalom.